Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited. Could another manned spy plane be in our future? Carter Aviation planning to expand Carter Copter demonstrations. Alaskan presidential TFR could hurt business. I'm Bree Cross, it is August 26, 2015, and this is Airborne Unlimited. Is it possible that the concept of a manned spy plane is still valid enough to beat out drones and satellites for the job? The Air Force is set to retire the iconic U-2 surveillance airplane, which first flew in 1955 in 2019. But the popular science website is stating that the Lockheed Martin Skunk Works is considering a follow-on aircraft to the U-2 that would be stealthier and have a longer flight time. The U-2, commonly known as the Dragon Lady, has shown its usefulness in spy operations as well as scientific research. And while the U-2 has recently competed with unmanned systems such as the Global Hawk for reconnaissance missions, the presence of a pilot on board the spy plane could be a deterrent to shooting it down. Scott Winstead, Lockheed's head of U-2 strategic development, opines that a country like North Korea would have no qualms about shooting down an unmanned aircraft, but shooting down an unarmed manned aircraft is considered an act of war. He added that the U-2 is also often used as a political tool by the U.S. government. Carter Aviation Technologies is continuing to focus to get a Carter Copter into production. Although flight testing has ramped down, flight demonstrations have not. Jay Carter has indicated that they have a need for more pilot capacity to give them added flexibility for the purpose of demonstrating their aircraft. Responding to this need, Carter has brought aboard pilots Chris Lord and Dan Holcomb. Carter said in part, quote, this is the best team we've ever had, end quote. Carter is positioning itself to demonstrate the aircraft at a variety of venues. It is also preparing to host interested parties and companies who desire to license the technology and put it into production. Carter added, quote, Chris and Dan are a key element of our preparations for a robust demonstration program going forward, and we are extremely excited to have them on board, end quote. After the break, seaplane pilots are concerned about Alaskan TFR. AML's patent-pending wireless induction charging system eliminates confusion over those charging cables, cuts down cockpit cable clutter, and allows you and your passengers to fly cordless and eliminate the cable nightmare. www.aviationmodificationleaders.com Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Welcome back. If you would like to be a supporter of Airborne Unlimited, send an email to jim at news.net. The FAA says it will be issuing multiple temporary flight restrictions in support of a presidential visit to Anchorage, Seaward, Dillingham, and Kotzebue on August 31st through September 2nd. While the exact areas of the TFRs have not yet been published, the FAA posted a NOTAM outlining the types of flights that will be prohibited in the restricted areas. It's reported that the TFR has pilots at many facilities, including the seaplane base at Lake Hood, very concerned. Lake Hood, which is adjacent to Ted Stevens International Airport in Anchorage, is considered the world's busiest seaplane base. Operators say that they can work around a TFR of a few hours, but closing the airspace for three days will be very detrimental to their businesses. Steve Williams, who owns a flight training business operating out of Lake Hood, says that many hunters may have to alter their plans because they will not be able to fly to their destinations. With some 2000 Aero TV programs webcast to cyberspace, sometimes it can be fun to look back and enjoy some of the places we've seen, the flyers we've met, and the planes we've flown. Here's a look at one of our favorite Aero TV classic episodes. 
know, I've, I've spent my entire life in aviation and I've come full circle back to what I love to do most. In this classic episode, Jim Campbell talks with Jim Scott about the issue of light sport aircraft. Scott is a recognized expert in the field and he provides a lot of great information about the LSA world. Search Plain Sense and Aero Wisdom on Aero TV's news channel. After these messages, United Airlines flight attendants file for mediation. The KSN 770 is an affordable, WAS-enabled, integrated MFD with a flexible hybrid user interface from Bendix King. Get your fingers on the 770's perfect blend of touchscreen and hard buttons. Easily control your GPS navigation, navcom, weather, traffic, and terrain in any condition. For more information, go to BendixKing.com. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Now certified Aspen Avionics single band ADS-B, ATX-100 and ATX-100G transceivers are the next gen ADS-B solution that provides the features pilots need while keeping flyaway costs low. Check it out now at AspenAvionics.com. Concorde's recombinant gas RG series sealed battery technology produces a high performance battery with the advantages of being pre-tested and fully charged at the factory. Find out more about Concord's entire line of batteries at www.concordbattery.com. Concord, the heart of your aircraft. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. United Airlines flight attendants, represented by the Association of Flight Attendants, CWA, have filed for federal mediation under the jurisdiction of the National Mediation Board. This action will allow United to complete its merger with Continental and Continental Micronesia. Montana Governor Steve Bullock is frustrated by the U.S. Forest Service, refusing to allow certain state-owned firefighting helicopters to engage fires on federal land. The U.S. Forest Service said Montana's helicopters do not meet their standards. The WestJet Pilots Association is disappointed that only five recommendations out of the approximately 50 recommendations to Transport Canada were published as a notice of intent. The recommendations were on the subject of bringing flight crew fatigue management up to ICAO standards. A Cessna 172 becomes a crash dummy. NASA will drop the plane from a height of 100 feet to simulate a severe, but survivable plane accident to test emergency locator transmitters. They refer to the 1974 Cessna as a vintage airplane. Flight Now is similar to the Uber Drive program, but it applies to airplanes. They want to link non-commercial GA pilots with travelers who want to hitch a ride and pay a share of the costs. The FAA says no to the plan. Well, that's our trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. Launching a large group of skydivers at the same time often involves multiple aircraft, and once again, this has resulted in a mid-air collision. There were 38 people on board two aircraft, rehearsing for an upcoming air show in western Slovakia, when the two airplanes collided at about 5,000 feet. Seven of those on board were fatally injured as a result of the accident, but 31 all skydivers survived by bailing out of the airplanes. According to reports, some of those had jumped before the impact, the rest exited the aircraft as they fell to the ground. Five were treated on the scene for minor injuries, according to the report, but none of the survivors required hospitalization. Both aircraft involved were L-410s, according to a Slavic television news broadcast. Well, that's our program for today. Remember to get comprehensive real-time 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily Monday through Friday with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. Please join us and a growing roster of over 100 outstanding industry associations and organizations every weekday for the best in aviation and aerospace news from the staff of the Aero News Network, the aviation world's most comprehensive news and information resource.